Hello and welcome to our week 30 video in my Through My Bible in One Year series here at St. John's. Uh, leading up to the readings that you went through this week, I had asked you to think about the life of the prophet Elijah, uh, specifically the ups and downs of his ministry. We can point just a few of those out. He was called by God to announce to wicked King Ahab that there would be a drought and what, what Elijah said came true and Ahab actually blamed Elijah for the drought, though Elijah was just the messenger. Uh, the drought came as a consequence of Ahab and Jezebel's wickedness. He thus had some credibility, even though he was hated by Ahab. So he was able to set up that showdown between himself and the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel, and God granted him that amazing victory when God sent fire down from heaven to lap up the water around the trench and burn up the sacrifice that Elijah had given. And Elijah then led the people of Israel to kill the prophets of Baal, and it seemed like there was a revolution happening, that the people were turning back to God. But then we have the great downturn of Elijah's career, where Elijah has to go into hiding because his life is threatened by Queen Jezebel. It seems like he's the only one left who believes in God, and he actually asks God to take his life. He says, take my life, I'm no better than my ancestors. But God, instead of taking his life, instead goes to, uh, goes to Elijah and, and gives him work to do, special work to do that, that would involve anointing Elisha as his successor, Jehu as king over Israel, and Hazael as king over Syria. And it seems then that Elijah spent a good chunk of his remaining ministry training Elisha to be his successor and then being succeeded by Elisha. So in Elijah we see a lot of ups and downs, but the constancy of God and his promises is what sustains Elijah. And then as you read the beginning of the Gospel of Matthew, specifically the first five chapters, I'd ask you to think about a timeline of the early years of Jesus' life. And when you combine that with what you had already read from the Gospel of Luke, you see, well, Mary and Joseph, of course, left Nazareth while Mary was pregnant and went down to Bethlehem because of the census that's announced in Luke. Jesus, of course, was born there, and there you have the events of Luke chapter 2, the angels announcing to the shepherds and the shepherds coming that night to Bethlehem to worship baby Jesus. You have then in Matthew the account of Jesus being brought on his eighth day of life to the temple in Jerusalem for the circumcision ceremony where Anna and Simeon meet him. And thus it seems that Mary and Joseph and Jesus stay in Bethlehem for some time while they are weaning Jesus. And it's probably a year and a half or two years after Jesus' birth that then the wise men come to visit Jesus and uh, with their interactions with Herod uh, discover that Herod has no love for Jesus and uh, the angel announces to uh, Joseph that he must flee uh, with Mary and Jesus down to Egypt. And so they leave Bethlehem to go down to Egypt and stay there until the death of Herod and finally go back up to Na Nazareth. To, to understand everything that happens in the early life of Jesus, you have to kind of marry these two accounts in Matthew and Luke and, and see everything that's going on there. As you continue this week through uh, the books of the Kings and Chronicles, uh, I'd ask you to go back to that list that you've started of the kings of Israel and Judah and continue to note not only who the kings are at any various time, but also to categorize them uh, according to that rating scale we had started a few weeks ago. Also, as you read through Matthew 5 through 10, uh, take note, especially in the Sermon on the Mount, of what it would have been like to hear that Sermon on the Mount if you were hearing it for the first time. You're hearing Jesus speak it uh, there in person. And pick out a few things from that Sermon on the Mount that you think would have really struck the hearers as unusual. God's blessings to you on your readings this week. Uh, we're looking forward to our discussion uh, the, the last Saturday of July at 2 p.m. here at church. And... Uh, we pray that this has been a blessing to you, and we'll produce another video, God willing, next week. Thank you.